she's talking about that was during the Martin Luther King when Martin Luther King got killed and I was a teenager I was like 13 and I had real narrow feet so my mother I had to wear expensive shoes so I didn't want shoes from the store that I normally had to get shoes from and all my girlfriends coming up was getting shoes off of Gay Street and I wanted these shoes out of this shoe store called Douglas Shoe Store. This is, I had a yellow dress for Easter and I wanted the pair of yellow shoes. And I kept, I don't like these shoes, I don't like them, and I kept pestering my mother. So we got on the bus coming from downtown, well, downtown, which is now down at the Harbor Road, to come back up to Gay Street. And we were on the bus when we found out that Martin Luther King had got killed. And they were rioting and looting and on the bus and it was a young lady on the bus that freaked everybody out on the bus because she got screaming oh my god i'm gonna get killed i'm gonna get killed and we we're like what the heck is going on so as we got closer to the gay street area we couldn't even go over the street so needless to say i didn't get my yellow shoes so it was really intense because i was like i said being by being a young young teenager i was terrified because i didn't know what was really going on what are these people doing? What's going on? Why the police wouldn't let us up on the block? Because at that time, coming up on the bus, we really didn't know what was going on and what was happening. You know, until somebody, I think somebody, either the, somebody communicated it or somebody had a radio or something and it was said that Martin Luther King had got killed and people were rioting. So that's how we found out. Yeah, I stayed in the house. That's how it was. Mm -hmm. I didn't come out. No. I, I was just afraid. I mean, I, it was, I was terrified. Um, I didn't come out. The last that they said that when they came up <clears throat> that they couldn't go in certain areas and, you know, um, they would get chased home and things of that nature. So I'm not really that familiar with it because I wasn't in that era. Mm -hmm. But my great aunt, would, she would have little stories to tell about it. Um, her and her, which was her husband, but he was her, free, her boyfriend at that time. They were coming home from somewhere, and they must have came up the wrong street, and some guys started chasing them. He ran and left her. <laughs> so she said when she finally made it home, because she said she fought. She, my aunt was a fighter. And she said she fought her way out of the situation. They said when she got home, <laughs> He was sitting on the steps saying, oh, B, I thought they had got you. My next job, oh, I worked in a sweatshop. They had some laundry. I worked for Lord Baltimore Laundry for three months. I couldn't take it. And that's why I was going to school. But hot. <laughs> Extremely hot. Dirty, dusty. And it's funny because they had no air in there. And what I did was um, run the uh, napkins through the the presser mm -hmm. and when I got tired I used to jam the machine up so it would break down and it would take the mechanics like a couple hours to fix it so we could sit around and not do no work because if you work with the little old ladies that had worked there forever you worked because they just <laughs> shoving that stuff through there like you trying to fold it it's just how fast they would the older women that worked in these shops for years and years and years. That's how they would do things. And they'd be over there, they'd be folding stuff. And I'd be like, <laughs> trying to fold it. You know, and, but you couldn't keep up because they were they were so fast because they did it. You know, like, this is not a job for me. You know?